Okay, my name is, is uh, Zachariah Abdi. <clears throat> I was born and raised in Djibouti. He's our only student from Djibouti, the only he, one. Yes, the only one, yeah. I'm so glad to be, you know, for this. I'm very honored, I'm very pleased to be the first one to join this LFCC. And I'm really enjoying to be connected with the with the Louis here and it's good for me, you know, to for your guide, for your uh, for your help. And I'm a father of uh, two kids. Uh, and then I came I came to the United States in 2014. Uh, the uh, the la in on uh, on December, so I've been here for almost maybe uh, now is my six years, and it's ups and down. I'm still struggling, and you know, getting to learn about this new system and the new America is for me. Um, yeah, I still keep forward and I keep pushing for this life too. So tell us about your country. <clears throat> okay, my country. Is a Djibouti, is a small country located in East Africa. We have uh, at the north we have Eritrea, and the west we have Ethiopia, and the south we have uh, Somalia, and the west we are, you know, facing the Red Sea. And in thing is the smallest country in the you know uh, in. Not the smallest, yeah, we have Lesotho, we have Swaziland, but we are a very small country in East Africa. So we speak, you know, our main language is the French. We speak French and we learn French. And the population, if I can say the population will be like less than 1 million, like around 900,000 people. Uh, the area is like 23,000, you know, kilometer square for and the capital is called also Djibouti, Djibouti city. And we have five other districts, which is Tojora, Obok, Tikil, al Sabi, and Arta. So it, do you speak French because the French colonized your country in the 1800s? Yeah, the French came, yeah, yeah, 1894, 1890s, uh, like 94, 92, some, yeah, the French came to the coast of Djibouti, especially to the north. So he established his colony until we get the independence, which is in 1977. Yeah, he was colonized by the French. Yeah, that's the only region that the French has in East Africa. So tell us about your school system. The school system is based on French system. We have uh, in elementary, we have uh, five years. And in the middle school, we have uh, four years. And on the high school, we have uh, three years. And then we have uh, the university, which is the, the first degree, we have three years. And the second degree, we have two years. What do you mean by that, Zachariah? You, the first degree is two. Oh, the first degree is uh, uh, is uh, three years of the first years of the first years of the university, which is uh, we call we call over the deck, and we call master. The next two years we call master. So, the the first three years is uh, is the first circle first cycle we call the deck. And is it three years? Okay. And so, what would what kind of degree would you have at three years? Oh, you, uh, I have a commerce bachelor of commerce. Okay. So, in three years, you get your bachelor's degree. Yes. Can you become a doctor in three years? Uh, for uh, okay, for the doctor, you have to be at least a five year. That field you have to be five years to be a generalist, to be a general. Okay, and how about a teacher? Can you be a teacher in three years? Oh yeah, you can be a teacher as a mathematician. You can focus on math, if you do math, you can learn three years in math, 
So you're gonna be a professor for the math or professor for the history or professor for, for, for English. So after three years, you can be yeah, a teacher or professor. You can teach uh, middle school and high school. Uh, for elementary, you don't need to go to the degree, but you can go to a uh, vocational school, which is you can be prepared for the teacher for elementary school. Really, you go to a vocational school to become yeah. a teacher for an elementary school. Yes, yeah, okay. You don't need to be a you know a higher education. You can be uh, at the uh, if you have uh, twelve years of school, that would be okay for you. So you go to two years for a vocational school, which is uh, intensive classes. So you can be prepared for 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 elementary. Okay, and so. Um, Education is a free, is a free of all, is a free for it, free of fees. We don't have to pay. So the government is in charge. So and is it mandatory for the uh, from the six years until the 16 years of uh, everybody has to go to education is a must, is a compulsory. So every child has to be sent to the school at the age of six. So the and um, and at the age of 16 is a compulsory. So the education is in, uh, education is paid by the government. So the school are free, of course. Okay. And so if you went to a vocational school for two years to be a teacher, and then you decided you wanted to be a high school teacher, would you have to go back to school? Okay, you you have to get yeah you have to go to the university and get the three years of university school you know a higher education level to go to to teach on uh, to teach on the middle school or high school on the university also. So can you change your mind? Yeah, you can change your mind. You always have opportunity to learn at night time or study or. And you know, you can you can continue through through part time or weekend classes from the university until you get your degree. When you get your degree, you can go to to middle school or high school. Okay. Um, and so, when you go to college, do you go five days a week or do you go two days a week like we do? We go five days at school. For five days a week, uh, no, it's gonna be six days. We we only off on Fridays. You're only off on Friday. No, before the system, yeah, before I moved to uh, 2014, before 2014, the country was working six days, business days. Now, after I moved to here, they changed on 2015 and they say the country goes uh, five days and two days weekend. So now we, we, we started from Saturday to Thursday. So no, Sunday to Thursday. Sorry, Sunday so you to have Thursday. to go to you have to go to school on Sunday. Yeah, Sunday is a business day for us as the country's majority Muslim people, and uh, uh, Sunday is a, is a work day. Yeah, it's a business day. Okay, so even in college, you go to school Sunday through Thursday. Yes, the colleges you go in school and every all education uh, learn because it's is 99 95 99 percent of the of the of the education with the universities everything is 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 led by is led by the by the government so all everybody will go to five days off sunday to thursday wow and so do you go all day for the university yeah for elementary yes for middle school yes and for high school yes but the university, it depends on your schedule and it depends on your, your, your curriculum. So, but most of the time you have to go, yes. Wow, wow, okay. So what are some of the landmarks in your country? What is it, what is it like? Is it warm there? I mean, you're kind of at the bottom of Africa, not... Yeah, the lowest you know, place. Yeah, the lowest place is a lake. It's a lake called Lake Essa. And so that's the is is a salted is a salted lake, and is the lowest point in Africa. And yeah, the country is very hot because is 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 close to the equator. When uh, and we have a uh, twelve month of uh, sunshine. 
We don't have any snow at all, no snow, no, no snow in the mountain, no snow at all for the 12th month. And it's very high and may, the temperature may reach until until the Celsius, it can reach until 41, 42. Like, oh, oh my God. Yeah, Celsius. Yeah, it's too hot. It's very hot country, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what do people do there? What is their job? What What is? But the, most of the people, they work for the government, like uh, military, school, education, health, and and uh, we we run we run services we run services we serve for Ethiopia which is 110 million people so they use our port so we we set, Ethiopia is a land uh, landlocked country so they don't have a port so they use a Djibouti port so our main source we get from the services like port airport telecommunication so we 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 give Ethiopia to you know the fiber optic you know because they don't have a sea so we serve it services. Oh, okay. So it is, it does require a higher education and also a higher standard of living. Yeah, it, it requires, yeah, for, but uh, if uh, the, the, the law, the law says if you have uh, a high school, you can you can make your your salary gonna be like uh, seven hundred dollar, but if you have uh, three years of uh, university and your salary may be like eight hundred to nine hundred dollar. So it depends on your on your on your certificate that you have. Based on your certificate, your salary will be based on that certificate. So it's by the law. So it depends on the law. So. There are some people who live, uh, you know, below that, like, like skilled people and non-skilled people. So, uh, yeah, the country, uh, one dollar of American equal uh, 177 Djibouti franc. So, wow. Yeah, so I think cost of living, yeah, is sometimes high because we import a lot of stuff because we don't have agriculture, we don't have industry, and we, uh, we don't have... Uh, 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 much of the resource, so we import a lot of stuff. So a lot of food we import. So the cost of living is very, very expensive. See, so very high too. Okay. So what are your some of your favorite foods that you cannot get in the United States? The f we uh, in as seen as we are a very small country. And we don't have a specific culture for food because of, so we are being influenced by the Yemenis people and the Ethiopian people. So we are mixing in, in the middle of these two nations and two cultures from the Arab and from the Ethiopian. So since there's a lot of Ethiopian living in Virginia, I think I have whatever I needed. So Ethiopian food, I, since I, there is a, large utopian community living in this country in especially in virginia dc so i think i have everything that i need from back on too okay so where's your favorite food is angera what is that <laughs> is angera is kind of a spicy food with the uh, with the uh, what we can say uh, it's a big pancake for americans say pancake but it's so big you know it's a pancake big so we eat like this with the spicy food, with the meat and with the, with the, with the salad. And so is your food normally spicy? Yeah, most of the time, 70% of the food should be spicy. Yeah, we like spicy food. Okay. And so what are some of the things that you would eat at a normal meal? A normal meal, we eat rice. Uh, we eat pasta also. Uh, as tea, we drink tea a lot of, uh, you know, tea, that's our favorite drink for tea. Uh, the next is the meat, meat should be number one and it should be served every food, you know, especially for the lunch and and the for- What for kind of meat? Is it fish? Is it beef? Oh is yeah, it the white meat goat? with fish, yeah. Fish we eat, 
uh, all seafood is, is eatable, so we can eat all seafood. And uh, the big, we don't eat the big and uh, pork uh, is not uh, allowed for us. And, but yeah, goat, cow, and camel. And camel? Yeah, we eat the camel, yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> what does a camel taste like? It's a camel. Uh, uh, it's very stiff and very hard, very stiff. So since we influenced by the Arab people, so the Arab eat also the camel. So we eat the camel too, and we eat the milk of the camel too. You know, we oh, drink okay. the milk. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So do people raise camels just to eat them? Yeah, we raise the camel to sell, to benefit, to milk, and to eat, yes. Okay, interesting. Yes. Okay. And sometimes we have to use it, you know, back days, the old days, we used to use it as a, as a transportation. So it can travel a long distance. So in 30 days, it may can, it, the, the camel cannot drink a water, so it can... So it's good for the desert and the hot place. Yes. So it's a resistant, very resistant animal. Is your country more desert or is it more tropical? It's semi-arid. I can say semi-arid. Semi-arid. Uh -huh. Yeah, semi-arid. They say semi-arid, but, but the land is not fertile. It is not good for you know the agriculture. It's not fertile. It's not good for agriculture? It is not good for agriculture. It's because a rock. It's, because, Montana, oh, a rock. Yeah. Really? I would yeah. think. So. Okay. All right. So what are your goals at Lord Fairfax? Lord Fairfax, uh, I'm very happy to be admitted in this college. And my goal is to learn uh, and to change my life and to rebrand myself, you know, and to, you know, the education is a very important thing and is the key to success in America. So if you don't have education, your life will be very tough because of, uh, you know, it's going to be trouble. So that's why I say I need to, uh, since my wife and everything is here now, I'm subtle, I'm stable. So I need to focus upon my future after three to four years, what, how, how I can look, look, look like. So my goal is uh, to join the, you know, the Lord Fairfax, before it was IT, but then I changed my mind into you know medical field. So I want to be a nurse after three to four years to graduate from the school, get you know credential, you know accredited, you know uh, lesson from the college, and change my life and move forward. And Zachariah, where do you live? Chantilly or Centerville? Herdon. Herndon, yes. Yeah. So he is coming to us from Herndon. Yes. yes. <laughs> last time, last time I was passing, I was passing the 29 South, the you know, the highway 29 South. So I saw I, I saw, you know, Lord Fairfax Fork here. Oh, I said, that's my college, you know. I'm so happy to pass <laughs> here near this, you know. I remember I said 29 South, this is my school, you know, this is my college. I'm very happy, you know. I can drive 40 miles. Uh, 30 miles, oh no, 30 miles, something like that. It's okay for me. I can I have a brand new car. So I'm ready for that for if it is face to face. And if it is online, that will be much better for me too. So I say this time I'm, I'm determined. Yeah. Very good. Anybody else have questions? I do. Hi, Zachariah. I'm Amber. Um, I'm curious about your transition when you first came to the United States. What, what was that experience like and what were your biggest challenges? I came here in 2014. So when I came here, uh, the biggest challenges was uh, I have to start my life, you know, below the level of the, you know, the American citizen or American resident people. So I went all the way down. So so I have to dig myself, you know, come up all the way to the up and, you know, move, come to the level of the, you know, standard living. So the my biggest challenge was, uh, it was, you know, moving, keep moving, don't stop, you know, no mother here, no father here, no brother here. So my biggest challenge is to build myself and to stand up and move forward, you know, so 
I used to have money challenge, but I say you are in a foreign country, so you have to build your life, stand up and move forward. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else have a question? How did you find Lord Fairfax? Oh, Lord Fairfax, you know, the way I found it is uh, I was looking for community college. So I say, so Nova was near to me and Lord Fairfax was the two other, you know, close to me. So I say, okay, these two community college are near to you. So I, the Lord Fairfax was more attractive and more welcoming. So I lean to Lord Fairfax. So I say, stay with the, with the Lisa, don't go anywhere else. Stay with Lisa. <laughs> That's why, that's why I moved to all the way to Lord Fairfax because of Lisa. Yes, that's great. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for being here and joining us. Thank you, so um, much, Lisa. Thank yeah. you everybody. And yes, it's almost time to sign up for summer and fall classes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm on. Uh, yeah, on, I'm on eyes. You know, everything is on eyes. So I'm ready for that. I already contacted, you know, the bookstore to request my book for this summer. So Good. I'm ready for that, yes. Good. All right.